Welcome to another crafting video. This is something I have been wanting to do, but I just haven't really had an idea of how to do it until today, actually. The idea is that I've been wanting to do a self-portrait, but I don't really want to paint me. I just want to paint things that kind of represent me. Today, we are going to be doing a metaphorical self-portrait. I have saved so many pieces of art in this category on my Pinterest called art that I want to make. And it doesn't mean that I necessarily want to recreate this exact art, but I love something about all of these pieces of art. So I was scrolling through them and I realized that I really like monochromatic paintings or paintings that mostly are just one range of colors. And specifically, I bet you can guess what range I like but it is the range of purples and blues. We are going to have some things that I love, like flowers and armor. It's going to be pretty. I have it in my head already. Let's get started. I'm gonna get my paints out and then we are just going to go to town on this painting. I got all my paints and mixed up all my colors, which were mostly blue. It is so nerve wracking to paint the first stroke on such a large canvas. I was going for a nice gradient for the background, starting with dark blue and going down to light blue with purple in the middle. You can see some arching strokes, but I kind of wish I had done straight across strokes after seeing what arch looked like in the completed painting. Here is a nice little time lapse to fill in the background. And this is a close up of what the gradient looked like when it was still wet. The gradient is looking very lovely. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Next, while that is drying a little bit, cause I don't think we're gonna mix anything into that background at all. So I'm gonna draw the basic idea that's in my head and try and get the layout done. In the middle, I want some armor. And this is some armor that I found on Pinterest. So I am going to link the photo and I'm gonna just kind of try to do my very best to list all of my references for this art because I'm not gonna be exactly like the original artist here, but uh, I am drawing heavy inspiration from someone else's art. Embellished as well, doodaloo doodaloo, -doo -doo -doo, right? And then there's like the shoulders. The thing that I think I liked the most, and I just don't know if I'm capable of it, is that there's feathers, plumes, coming out from behind the head. And then there's some very striking flowers. So we got one that's like a violet, a fern, a big, sprig of these types of flowers. What are these called? They, I think it's like some sort of bell. Uh, daisy. We have the florals here at the bottom. That's pretty much the placement. By this point, the gradient is dry and I have marked the center of the painting with an X. Right now, I'm kind of just sketching out the armor outline. One of the more annoying things about paint is that you have to continually dip your brush back into the paint. And let me just say that that is so annoying to edit. Now we are painting the basic outline of the feather plumes. My plan was to fill in the armor with a basic gray color and later I would go back and add the highlights and shadows.
And here I am adding some more shape to the feathers, which was particularly difficult to imagine. Adding stars was probably the most fun part of the whole painting. I am going to try my best to incorporate stars into all of my paintings. They're just so cute. I decided for some reason that painting a white silhouette of the flowers would help them show up better. So that's what I'm doing here. You guys can judge whether or not it actually helped. I also got tired of standing so I had tried painting in the floor for a bit. This is probably the most satisfying part of this process because now I'm adding details, highlights, and shadows to the armor. And if I do say so myself, it turned out so awesome. The details on the neck were tiny and I struggled to have a steady hand. Some of it turned out how I wanted, but a lot of it was messy. I love this part of the helmet. The contrast of the lights and darks are so dramatic. For half a second, I considered leaving the background visible through the helmet, but I am so happy I filled it in. Let's talk about these feathers. Holy cow. Their beauty is all in the shadows and it was so difficult to try to remember where there might be a shadow. These feathers took me over an hour at least. I am very proud of them though. By the time I was painting the flowers, all of my artistic energy was pretty much depleted and I did not give them as much care. By the way, I don't think I mentioned, but I painted this all in one day with the exception of the last two flowers. I painted for about four and a half hours straight. After I painted this purple petunia, I vowed never to paint a petunia again. They are so difficult to paint. and Minecraft is what got me through these flowers. I wasn't so sure about adding shadows to these little bell flowers, and I'm still not sure. You guys will have to let me know. How do you think they look with the shadows? Now on to my second favorite flower on this painting. I just love how the center of this daisy turned out. Okay, this is my favorite flower on this painting, the purple iris. I had to take a break before painting this flower, and so I was able to put some care into it. And it definitely paid off. I spent quite some time working on giving depth to the color of this flower, and especially on the petals. Finally, we can take a look at the finished painting.
The painting is complete. Overall, I enjoyed this project. It's something that I'm proud of. I did work really hard on it. I had to tell myself to keep going, to keep pushing through, especially on the fronds that were coming out from the helmet because I've not practiced shading. That kind of shading is something I've never done before and so it was like a brain twister the whole time that I was painting it. When I look at this painting, it makes me happy. It gives me like a sense of security in my own identity, if that makes sense. I'm happy that I got to share this piece of my brain with you. Let me know what you think of it. What does it make you think of? What feelings does it give you? I have a specific emotion in mind. I want to know if you guys get the same thing from my painting that I'm trying to communicate. Because if so, then that's a success. Comment below. What does this painting make you feel? What does it make you think? Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next crafting video.